Naked Agility is available for DevOps and Agile training and consulting. Contact us for a free consultation. Hello, um, my name's Martin Hinchelwood. I'm a professional Scrum trainer with Scrum.org uh, and also a, a Microsoft MVP in Azure DevOps. Um, I had a, a, I've been doing um, some live videos over the past couple of weeks. Um, I noticed that many people are, and I've been inspecting, adapting on the things that other folks are doing. And I think um, this is going to become a regular session. I haven't settled on the timing yet, but I'd like to be able to answer um, a bunch of questions that folks ask. It's been um, an interesting couple of weeks um, in that regard, and I've had a few people uh, on uh, Jim um, a few days ago uh, and uh, Daniel Vacanti last week uh, to have a little chat. Um, I've since upgraded some of my technology uh, with Daniel. We had some audio issues, so I now have a monitor in my ear um, and I got a new, new microphone. So I think these things will help a little bit. Uh, the thing that I wanted to um, chat a little bit about today is I got a, a question from somebody. Um, they asked on LinkedIn, not everybody wants to um, ask uh, publicly. So I've added a link down here that you can go to and ask uh, me a question. If you don't want to ask it publicly, you can always ask it publicly as well. Um, I think one of my things are not working. Let me check. Uh, you can always ask it uh, publicly and it seems to be online. It's just pretending it's not. Okay. Um, yep, I think I've got a problem with that one. Let me just delete it and re-add it. Um, not that one. That's the one I want. Oh, one of my streaming services was uh, not connecting properly. I think these things um, happen. They're sent to try us. So as I get set up with these things, I'm going to figure it out. Uh, so that's me adding it back in again. It says sending data, but it hasn't popped up and said it's online yet. So we will see. Um, I guess I'm going to have to go figure that out afterwards. Never mind. So um, I'm going to be doing a, a few of these. Um, I wanted to make sure that everybody uh, was able to ask questions, even if they didn't feel um, that they would be able to um, see, uh, uh, they, they, they didn't want to know, some everybody to know who they were, that kind of thing. Uh, so I set that up. That was uh, one of my uh, colleagues who does some uh, office hours uh, uh, suggested that. Um, and I think that makes a lot of sense. So the question that, that I got um, that I thought was a little bit interesting um, was what are folks going to do with their uh, teams now they're, they're a, 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 not a, effectively a distributed team? Um, what are they going to do with their boards? How are they going to manage uh, that information? Um, so I, I want to talk about um, three different platforms um, that I've used. Um, they all have their pros and cons. They all have their specific uh, areas of interest. And I think there's a little bit of progression there. Uh, so I want to talk about that. But I also want to um, uh, uh, speak a little bit about um, what it says in the Scrum Guide around uh, co-located teams. Um, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't really uh, uh, mention uh, co-located teams. It says it's better if people are able to work together, same as it does in the Agile Manifesto. Um, and people work best if they're in uh, the same same location, like having a team room, having our stuff on the walls, and having everybody together. 
Uh, but the realities of the current situation mean that that's not always going to be possible. Um, and uh, while it does mention those things in both the Scrum Guide and the Agile Manifesto, it doesn't say that they're mandated. It's okay to have a distributed team. Um, it, it, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, you're going to maybe uh, lose some communication effectiveness, but that's the cost of doing it that way. That's just the way it is. There's nothing that says you can't do that. So I want to um, make you feel like, or I want you to have the expectation that you can still be doing Scrum, uh, you can still be doing Kanban, you can still be doing your Agile practices, even when you're not in the same room. That's okay. There's no mandate for that. Uh, the mandate for co-location, or not the mandate for co-location, the um, recommendation of co-location um, is really around maximizing those communication channels. And we can do that maximization even when uh, we're not face-to-face. -face. So there are tools we can use to store our uh, backlogs, priorities, and boards on uh, the internet so everybody can get access to them um, in a way that it's not just sitting um, in an Excel sheet that everybody's editing because that does not do well for, for multiple um, edits. Um, so what I want to do is show you these uh, uh, three tools that I've, I've, I've looked at. Um, I've used all of these tools in Anger. Um, they have their pros and cons. Some of them are easier than others. Uh, the first uh, that I wanted to show was um, GitHub. So if I go to github.com, uh, GitHub does have uh, the ability to have uh, issues. I have a, a project uh, here in GitHub, a repository. Um, in GitHub, the onus is on the repository and then everything else hangs off that repository. Uh, so I can go in and I can I can do issues, which are pretty straightforward. Um, they're not great for agile management. It's just a list of issues. Um, but any of these issues um, can be added to a project. So here I've added this issue um, to um, a particular uh, project and it's been added to the to-do column. So I've got to-do, in progress, and done. Um, and I can click the little cog and I can add it to as many uh, different projects as I want. And it will basically create an item uh, on that project uh, that is related to this item here. They're not, I think under the covers, they're probably separate items, but from our perspective, they're kind of the same thing, uh, but it will show us uh, some cross data between them. Uh, so if I go over into projects, um, I can create as many sub projects to this repository. Remember repository is the main item and then projects are inside of that. Um, where, uh, I, and I've, I've not done a whole, whole lot with this, uh, but I can add additional columns. Um, I can edit the column. Uh, I can edit the name. Uh, I can add things. I can copy a link directly to that column and I can drag things around inside of that uh, uh, world. So there's an item that I added uh, directly to the the board. And here's that item uh, that is linked, that is, uh, when I click it, it's going to open um, the, the, the data from uh, the other item, rather the issue, rather than having uh, another thing going on there. Uh, this is a good uh, tool if you are running an open source project. Uh, as many are. This is one of my open source projects. Um, it has its limitations. Uh, the All of the, the data is stored in the US. So if you are an uh, enterprise uh, company or any European uh, uh, or non-US entity that has to uh, have private data, um, then I would not recommend storing it in uh, uh, GitHub privately at the moment. If it's a public project, like it's a open source, doesn't matter. I have all of my stuff in GitHub as well. Um, but if it's a private project, you might want to um, store it somewhere uh, where you can control the sovereignty of the data. Um, and that's, that's a big deal for many European organizations. Uh, but there's also private repos if you're a US company in GitHub as well, and you get some of those 
uh, features there. So that's a, a pretty straightforward tool. Uh, lots of people already understand how to use GitHub. Uh, they like the features of GitHub and they can add uh, that capabilities there. The second tool uh, that I want to look at is actually a, a little bit of a step back from, from development. Um, and that's uh, uh, tasks.office.com. Um, Microsoft Planner uh, is a, a small tool built into um, the Office 365 suite. Um, there is an app uh, that works on your uh, mobile phone uh, that allows you to uh, uh, create uh, boards and move items between those boards. Uh, so at the moment, they just call them buckets. Uh, so if I do in progress, done to create the same idea as we had in uh, GitHub, um, and then I just add a task. I can add a task on there and then I can drag it between the boards. I can add additional information if I want, like attachments and priorities and start dates and end dates and all of those kind of things. Um, and whether it's started in progress or completed, so regardless of the, the columns, so a little bit weird maybe. Uh, but I can also add uh, little tags so I can make this one uh, green. I don't know what that did. Did that do anything? Do I have to click it? Or do I, is that just changing the label? Is there a save button? Okay, I don't know how uh, that part of that works, but um, I'm sure you can figure it out. It's a, a simple board. It has really good uh, uh, mobile access, um, which GitHub has good mobile access just for issues and wikis and source code. It doesn't have good mobile access for the planner, uh, their um, uh, projects yet. That's okay, I'm sure, I'm sure they'll get around to it at some point. Um, but this can be a useful tool. Um, this can, uh, you can have tasks on here that link into your Outlook tasks. Um, you can have uh, stuff you just add to the board. Uh, you can create ch charts and schedules uh, and plan around this with notes and things like that. I think this is this is a good uh, medium solution, especially if you're interacting or doing non-engineering work, um, and you can add. Uh, your your plan to your Outlook calendar so you can see all of the things you're supposed to be working on um, and you can add as many people as you want into the uh, project. You can see here I've got a bunch of uh, guests in there because uh, there's only two people in my Azure Active Directory that are um, like members of the Active Directory. Everybody else is a, is a guest. Uh, so this is part of my uh, one of my projects. Uh, the other one that I want to talk about is uh, actually my one, my favorite one to use, um, and that's uh, dev.azure.com. Uh, Azure DevOps is a tool uh, that is not always free. Uh, so GitHub uh, features are free for um, public projects. Um, Office tasks.office.com, uh, Microsoft Planner is free for uh, or free, that's the bad word, is included in um, your your Office 365 subscription. So it will just all be there, um, which is okay. Uh, but there is also um, the uh, tools in Azure DevOps to look at as well. So if I sign into Azure DevOps, is going to sign into one of my um, organizations. Uh, so my NKD Agility, my company's organization. Um, and here I have uh, all of my projects listed. So in Azure DevOps, project is at the top, and then you can create multiple, you can have one or more repos inside of your project. So if you just have a small uh, product that you're working on, you can have a uh, project and repo just being the same thing, you want to one relationship, which is actually what I've got here. Um, or you can create multiple repos inside of a uh, project uh, and by adding repos to that, that library, just like you add projects to GitHub. Uh, so if I go into my Azure DevOps uh, process tools, um, uh, you can see that I have some wiki. It's very uh, a little bit like uh, GitHub in that regard. It doesn't have all the same features. There's a little bit of disparity between them. Um, but I have uh, boards. 
and on uh, boards I have uh, straight work items. This is the work item tracking system. So this is just a list of the work items. So I can see my active work items. I can see work items I follow. I've recently updated. Um, I can add new work items of various types. So it's not just issues or just task, uh, like in the other two tools that I showed. Uh, you have various different things. I'm using a, a process in here called the Scrum process. So I have product backlog item. Um, which rolls up to feature, which rolls up to epic. It has bugs, it has test cases, it has tasks, it has a bunch of different things. Uh, but I have this, uh, these entries. So this would be uh, an individual work item. Uh, this one is a backlog item. Uh, and this backlog item has a bunch of data associated with it, just like in the other tools. So description, uh, discussion, um, and various things. I've got a follow link, uh, but I also have additional things I can link to it. Um, so I can link to uh, uh, development items. Uh, so here there's a pull request um, and there's, a, is that a, a merged PR? So that's a, a, a commit uh, and a pull request associated with it. Uh, but I can also link to existing other types of work items. So either uh, related, parent, child, I can actually link it to a GitHub issue by pasting in the GitHub URL. Um, I can uh, relate all of these things uh, uh, together, which is kind of kind of nice. Uh, I kind of like that. That's, this, is, this is this is my tool of choice for these kind of things. Um, so then, if I go back into uh, here and I go into boards, on boards I'm going to have my Kanban board. So the default Kanban board um, has the same states as the work items. Uh, so my work items here, my product backlog items and bugs go from new to approved to forecasted to done. Uh, that's the, the minimum you can have on the board is what you've got set up in the, in the process. Uh, but then each individual team that's working in here, um, and this tool in particular supports having uh, multiple boards and multiple teams inside the same uh, project. Uh, so I could have, and I do have customers that have uh, 70 or 80 teams in a single uh, uh, project. So single source code, um, 70 to 80 teams working on one product. They each have their own uh, boards, backlogs, sprints, uh, but they have some commonality and they can share things uh, between, they can link between each other's stuff as well to so show dependencies and that kind of thing. Uh, so here I'm just looking at a, a, a board. So this item's in forecasted and I can drag it around um, and you'll see that the state changes from uh, new to approved to forecasted. Um, once they get on to all the way to the end to done, uh, they should be locked off uh, and finished. That's the idea. Um, so I can view it as a board, a Kanban board. I can control this. Um, I can do, I have some features to allow me to control it. The first is, uh, what fields do I want to show on each item? Uh, that's pretty basic. And then some color coding uh, rules I can set up. So I can set it up that things glow if they've been changed recently or um, if they've been tagged by a certain tag. Uh, that's that's always you can do that and set up um, annotations for items that are in GitHub, tasks, um, or tests, you saw that I could link from that work item to other things. If it's tasks, GitHub issues, or uh, tests, they're actually going to show up uh, uh, on this uh, dashboard if you tick that that box. Um, and tests have a special, uh, some extra features. Uh, this is for manual testing, not for automated testing. Uh, so this is when you're transitioning into being an agile team and you still have a lot of manual tests and you want to bring them on board and um, that's all supported in here i don't expect agile teams to use a lot of this um, and then you can set up and control the columns so remember i said that the minimum set of columns are the columns from your um uh, 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 work item so what what's set as the states uh, but i could take um approved and I could break it into um, two. I'm just seeing if I can move that up. I can, although I managed to click and do that. There we go. So if I want to break approved up into uh, two uh, uh, columns, um, I can insert to the right. Uh, so this one, I'm going to call it um, refinement. 
and then once we agree uh, refinement is complete, this one is going to be, oh, Teddy, ready. Okay, uh, so refinement, you can see the state mapping, so that's the state that is on the work items, um, is the approved state will be in refinement, and the ready state, uh, sorry, the refinement column will have items from the approved state, and the ready column will also have items from the approved state. Um, the system will default them to one of the columns because we just split a column where there might be items in it, and then you can move things uh, between it. And that allows us to each team, even within the same project, um, can set up their own set of columns. So you can say, here's the standard that our organization is going to follow, um, which is new, approved, forecast, done. That's our standard. Everybody working on the one product has to have the work items flow that so we can understand what's going on. Uh, we can see a holistic view of everything in our product, uh, everything in our, our work that's going on. But then each team can go and set up and configure uh, their boards however they like in order to uh, facilitate them uh, uh, owning that, managing that, following their own individual processes. Because every team's work might be a little bit different. They work on different things. They have different types of work that are going on inside that project. That's okay. They can they can do that how they like. Um, you can set up additional swim lanes. So by default, there's only one horizontal swim lane. Uh, but you could set up uh, a swim lane for a particular uh, stream of work. Um, I am in the same um, understanding as Daniel Vacanti in that having different classes of work um, or, or classes of service is probably a bad idea. It's going to interrupt your ability to flow on your other work. Um, and you're better just improving your overall flow. So I would just leave it as default. Uh, but if a team did want to experiment uh, with an expedite, except I can't spell, there we go, um, expedite uh, lane, then they can do that as well. Um, and then you can choose how cards are ordered. So do you drag them in between? Um, if you have only a few things, you might want to have it set up this way. If you have hundreds of things on your backlog because you're not that agile a team yet you know you've got 300 things in your sprint that can be a little bit much uh, you can set it so the order doesn't change when you're dragging them around because uh, that can be a little bit difficult um, and you can also uh, display or hide different levels of backlog so many teams especially uh, scrum teams uh, working um with either just Scrum or Scrum and Kanban are going to look just at backlog items. They don't really care about anything else. Uh, but if you've got much bigger teams uh, where you have more than uh, two teams working on one product, you might want to enable uh, features and epics uh, as needed. And then you can set up the work days and whether uh, bugs are treated as backlog items or not. Uh, so I made a few changes there. So I'm going to save and close that and you'll see the changes in the UI. It's going to refresh. And you'll see that I now have a expedite lane. So if I create a new product backlog item, uh, I'm just going to call it test because I'm lazy. Uh, I can drag that into expedite, and then I can have I I my I and my team might have agreed different rules uh, for expedite than for the default lane, uh, and I can have things flow through the system like that. So that, that works pretty well on uh, boards, just setting up and managing Kanban boards. It has whip limits. It doesn't force you uh, to adhere to them. Um, it, this tool doesn't really force you to do a lot. Um, it kind of leaves it open for you to figure that out, uh, which is kind of the way I like it. That's how an agile team should function because each team should be able to choose to do things differently. If they want to break their whip limits, that's okay. Well, they can monitor their data and see how that goes. So I can do some analysis on here. So this is, uh, I don't have iteration set up, so it's not going to show velocity, uh, but it would show a cumulative flow. I have one average work in progress because uh, I don't have a lot of work flowing across in this uh, team, hasn't been uh, worked on in a little while. Uh, so you can set up some uh, analysis. These ones are the defaults. Uh, and then there's a feature timeline. So you might have uh, some kind of, 
uh, uh, dates or expectations that you have to meet. Maybe there's a big event coming up uh, that you want to work towards or maybe have some features um, that are available for. Um, in order to do that, uh, oh, I've got no features in progress in the timeline, so it's not going to show me uh, uh, the features. Uh, but I can create a, have a feature timeline that shows that. I can create an epic roadmap, which I also don't have any epics. Uh, so it's probably, yeah, I don't have any epics assigned. So it's probably not going to show that either. That's okay. I'll go back to boards. Uh, so this is my backlog items board. Um, and all of those things, well, at least uh, uh, board and analytics um, are available at the backlog level. And if I went in and enabled... Do, 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 backlogs. Pew, pew. If I enabled features and epics, I could also change to features and I would have a board, which you'll see it has only the default columns for features, which is new in progress done. That's the default. Um, and I can break that out if I want at that level. Uh, but analytics is based on uh, the features and then feature timeline is always features and epic roadmap is always epics because the expectation is um, features are something th th the way um, a lot of the decisions have been made in this product is around uh, the way a lot of teams inside of Microsoft work because it's a Microsoft tool and Microsoft use it extensively internally uh, so backlog items are just backlog items uh, features are looked at as something that you're going to deliver. Um, so while you might deploy a backlog item out to production, it, it's not a, a tangible finished thing uh, that you might want to see a timeline of when are those things going to be finished, what's currently in progress at the moment for that feature. Uh, so if you think about it, the development team um, and the product owner at the implementation level care a lot about the backlog items. At the feature level, you're looking at holistic units of of things that go together backlog items obviously are broken down into smaller items and and then epics are things that appear on your roadmap maybe a longer lived it's going to take many many sprints uh, to get them get them get them finished maybe even many releases to get them finished uh, that's the way uh, that looks so that's uh, boards in here it also has backlogs backlogs are super uh, handy um, and i find to be very underused uh, with teams uh, so in here, I just have a list of the items that are on my backlog and I can drag and drop them uh, to order them. I can also go and stick them in sprints uh, and uh, I can configure and control uh, the sprints and set them up. Uh, so that will let me set up my backlogs. And again, it has analytics and access to the feature type line and the Epic roadmap. Um, that's, they're the same. So I can view that as a board or I can, vote. so if I go to, oh, wrong button. View as a board, it takes me back here. View as a backlog, it flips to that other uh, view. So backlog uh, is uh, uh, the view, uh, board is also a view, and it's the same data. It's the same data. So I can use this across multiple teams. Uh, the boards even have auto-updating. So if you're looking at it on multiple screens, it will automatically update as you go through, which is kind of nice. Um, so the, the, I've already talked about those features. Uh, but now I'm in a backlog view. I'm not sure that's going to configure the team settings. So it's just going to have that. Yep. Um, so the current sprint uh, plus whatever other ones you have uh, currently figure, configured are going to be listed in there. There's lots of different ways to set up and configure sprints. I have a number of blog, blog posts on how to do that for one team, um, how to do that for hundreds of teams working on one product, um, and also how to do lots of different products inside of the one project as well. Uh, which many organizations do for various reasons. Um, so I have a lot of blog posts on those topics. You can go look at those. Uh, but you can also, if you are a Scrum team and not just a Kanban team, or you're a Scrum and Kanban team, or uh, a Kanban with a little bit of Scrum team, or just a Kanban team, or just a Scrum team, all of these features work uh, well. Uh, you would just ignore that Sprints tab because uh, you wouldn't need it. Uh, but if you are using that, you'll see uh, you can have your PBIs that have been brought into the sprint pinned to the left and you can break that down into tasks that then flow across the board. Um, I recommend uh, working as a, a, a team using the Kanban guide for Scrum teams. 
Uh, I think it's really important to have good uh, met cross-cutting metrics uh, that you can rely on and user stories, uh, story points and velocity uh, does not give you that. It might give you that for one team early on in their maturity level. Uh, but if you want a mature Scrum team, they need to start looking at the Kanban guide for Scrum teams and bringing in some of those more advanced metrics uh, to look at. Uh, but in here, um, I've got my uh, task board. I can see that's so that's my Scrum board, you might call it, but it's uh, just a list of tasks relating to the things on your backlog. Um, I can look at the breakdown of my uh, backlog. So let's say in my task board, um, I break this item into task one and task two. There we go. Um, I can go to the backlog and I'll see that this has been broken down. So they're actually related. And if I open that task, doo -doo -doo, you'll see it has a link um, up to the PBI product backlog item uh, that I have there. Uh, it's, it's pretty straightforward, kind of like you would expect it to have. Um, so there are some other tools. There are some um, teams out there that like to look at their capacity and plan towards that. Uh, so this is not meant as a project management tool. It does not have the features that you would expect in a project management tool. Um, however, if I'm a team and I just want to get an idea of what my capacity is for this sprint as opposed to the previous sprint, or I have uh, uh, people who take on different sets of tasks, I can add some of those things in. I tend not to use those features in capacity. I just ignore that. Uh, to be honest, I now uh, tend to ignore the task board as well. Uh, but if I have an immature team, I might have to look at one of those things. I might need some of that data. Um, and then hopefully as we scale up the team, as we scale up the uh, uh, project and the people around, uh, we can start ditching some of those uh, things as well. Um, so I can view this either from a, a backlog uh, basis, or I should be able to change that to, so that's filtering, uh, where is view options? There we go. Uh, so instead of looking at it from a backlog items, uh, on the left and tasks, I could flip to people on the left and what tasks are assigned to them flowing across. Um, I can also have uh, work details and planning so I can move things to other sprints uh, and do those things all in the, the, the UI. Um, I can create queries if I just wanna go find a bunch of work items or I want to load them out into Excel or for, don't do it, but if you need to load them into MS Project, you can do that as well, but don't tell anybody. Um, you can just create a query, uh, build a query in here for um, finding work items in your system, uh, emailing them around, all of those kind of things. Um, there's also a tool called Plans, uh, which is about uh, how do you plan work for multiple teams working together? Um, and it allows you to create uh, plans, add teams and their backlogs to the plan and see what's going on across a much larger team. So if you had a, a Nexus uh, and you were using the Nexus framework, you could set it up. Um, it would also support things like uh, SAFE. Uh, uh, it would support more um, non-agile methods like uh, uh, SAFE or uh, Waterfall or other things. You can, you can do that in here. Um, if you're following more agile uh, uh, techniques. So you're you're looking at DevOps, you're looking at uh, Scrum, you're looking at Kanban, you're looking at uh, any of the reducing cycle time, uh, figure it out as you go along ideas, then um, you will uh, be able to use some of these features in that way as well. Again, it's going to have features that you're not going to need if you're in either category or features you're not going to like to use if you're in either category. Um, but it's because there are lots of teams doing lots of different things. Um, I've also added a, a couple of um, plugins to this. Uh, I have a, a tool from Daniel Vacanti, uh, Actionable Agile. I just have the demo and it looks like my free trial's expired. Uh, but this allows you to do some really powerful uh, um, uh, analysis of the, the data. Um, and that's a tool from Daniel Vacanti from his company. So uh, go look up at Actionable Agile Analytics. Uh, I also have a 
dependency tracker in there, which one of the MVPs built, I think. I don't know what this will load. It might not be pretty because I haven't used it in a while. No, there's no dependencies based on uh, my uh, criteria, but it's all tools to uh, play around with. So those were uh, the three tools um, that I've used reasonably extensively. I've also looked at and used Trello on occasion. Um, I've also uh, uh, looked at other tools uh, that are out there as well, um, but not in any great, great depth. These are the tools that I've uh, used in anger uh, with teams, uh, figuring out how things uh, go together, how to, how to organize that. Um, so I'm gonna take a quick look and see if there are any questions. I think we're not streaming on YouTube because it wasn't working properly. Um, but everything else is maybe, no, it's maybe not. I'm not 100% sure. I would need to go, oh, maybe it's online. Um, if there are any uh, questions, I can answer them. I can also uh, take questions on this URL that I will answer in the next session. Um, I'm quite happy to uh, uh, take that into the next session. And if you come back to our uh, YouTube channel, which is, I don't have it up there, but it's nkdagility.net forward slash TV. Uh, you will get to our YouTube channel where everything streams on there, except for this one, because I think it's not uh, actually working. So I will have to look at that after this and uh, figure that out. Uh, so, if there are no questions, then I will I will have to figure out why YouTube's not working. Never mind. So hopefully, um, you got something useful out of this. Uh, I'm going to schedule this. I'm not 100% sure what that schedule is going to be yet, but I'm going to uh, come up with a schedule for uh, the office hours uh, where it's just, you know, come and ask me some questions. Uh, and I'm also going to come up with a schedule for uh, the webcast that I've been doing, the live uh, webcast, uh, where I have some... Uh, talk about some stuff, uh, do some presentations, get some uh, people in to talk about things. Okay, well, hopefully uh, this was useful for uh, some folks and anybody who comes back uh, later, please use the ask uh, and see if we can't uh, find some other awesome questions to answer. Okay, thanks very much. Naked Agility is available for DevOps and Agile training and consulting. Contact us for a free consultation.